Welcome everybody to yet another episode of uh, It's Not Just Nicolo. We have another person here today and you probably recognize him. That's Nick from the Linux Experiment. And I, I think you also know the channel because I do have analytics on what other channels my subscribers watch. So not much introduction. You've published a video regarding what could, you do, could do better in regards to actually um, doing a bit of promo about the features that they have. Uh, can you summarize it a bit for those who haven't watched it yet? Because everybody will watch it. Yeah, of course. Uh, so first, hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to be here. And so you have not only Nicolo, but you have Nicola as well. Because, well, I, I shortened my name to Nick, but my full name is Nicola. So you've got two of those, which is nice. So the video uh, is titled, uh, KDE is wasting its, its power. I know that the thumbnail is very clickbaity <laughs> and people have been quick to notice that, but I didn't really know what else to do. So what it's talking about, it basically how KDE is this powerhouse of a desktop. You can do whatever you want on it. You can, you can customize it, of course. Well, you probably all know most of the features. The issue is that certain features that are super exclusive to KDE are never really publicly talked about or explained when you start a new KDE session or when you install KDE for the first time. You don't know that they exist. Uh, I, I took three of those randomly because those are uh, things that I think people should really know. There's the activities feature, uh, there's the KWIN scripting feature, and there's KDE Connect. So out of the three, KDE Connect is probably the more widely known of all of them. But it was also a good example because it's never really showcased in any way. So the goal of the video was to say, you know what? KDE can do all these amazing things, but what good is it if no one knows that they exist? That, that was basically the point. Yeah, regarding the thumbnail, there was the official Kitty account that on Twitter <laughs> replied, replied with a snarky comment. I actually went to the promo chat saying, maybe this was a bit too snarky, but there was like, nah, it's just for fun. So yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, I, I played with that. <laughs> I could yeah. not expect people to be like, oh, that's great. <laughs> for, for reference, it, it is Kitty on a trash can. So. <laughs> No, so th the first reaction that I saw inside of KDE actually was the promo people. And uh, I think rightfully, a lot of the promo people was were like, uh, but we actually talk about this all the time, like activities, KDE Connect, and all this stuff uh, from the KDE official accounts. We keep talking about them. And we even did an initiative uh, a bit of time ago that was regarding uh, make, doing one video, I think every week, that talked about a feature that is not widely known in KDE. And we have this playlist with at least 10, 15 videos, I think, with a lot of nice things that people don't know about uh, KDE Plasma. And that was an initiative. However, if I understood correctly, this is still like on YouTube and on and uh, on PeerTube, obviously. It's not integrated in, in the Plasma desktop itself. So what you're proposing uh, for is more like things inside of Plasma desktop itself. Yeah, because of course you can talk about those features on, on Twitter, Mastodon, PeerTube, YouTube, wh whatever platform you choose. But the fact is a lot of people that are going to be using KDE are not going to be aware of these channels. They are not going to follow them and they are not going to know about them. And if you don't promote these channels either inside of KDE, it means that basically the product that you're shipping has no real explanation about these features unless you as a user is willing, unless you are willing to go and find this information outside. And that's a big debate uh, on, on Linux in general. It's should users be expected to go read a manual and, and get their own information or should you basically spoon feed them the information and... and and, and let them know about this thing right where they use uh, the product, the desktop. In my opinion, I think external sources are great, but if they are not linked inside of the desktop itself, they might as well not exist because a lot of people will never know that they exist. So either you need to promote these channels inside of the desktop saying, hey, if you want to know more about our features, if you want to know more about what we do, about our updates, here are our accounts. You can follow them. You can watch our stuff. It's cool or you need to integrate maybe these small videos explaining these features right in the desktop. Optionally, of course, you don't want to bombard users with notifications and, and tutorial pop-ups and, and tours every time you click on something. It's not Windows. You don't want to, to smother users with, with uh, accompanying them. 
but you can integrate these in a in a simple way maybe just on certain uh, settings panels having a a small button that displays a video that helps people understand what this does and, and how this works could be a good idea yeah, I guess we have this kind of option. Uh, we, we used to have a button in the title bar that was, um, uh, how do you call it again? Uh, you know, the in English. Uh, uh, a question mark? Question mark, thank you. Uh, English. And uh, <laughs> if, if you press that and then hover at any element, it would give you an explanation. But that was mostly for, you know, actually understanding how the UI works yeah. and this kind of stuff. So it's a bit different. Uh, going into more details about what you said, you talked about uh, activities a lot, yeah. which I fully understand. And uh, I think that the biggest issue with activities is not rather that we don't talk about it a lot, even inside of the Plasma desktop, but rather we ourselves as Kitty, I don't think we have a clear idea of what activities should be and how we want to shape them. There has been a lot of discussion about this, even in the light of the Plasma 6 that's coming up um, in not too much time. And there's always some people that say we should remove activities entirely and try, try to integrate those features inside of uh, virtual desktops themselves. And other people who say, no, uh, let's make um, activities, activities more powerful and um, give them even more features. Mm. And the kind of issue that we have with with IF personally, with promoting a lot of activities is that since not, not a lot of people use them, uh, not even a lot of developers, and they are quite buggy to me at least. As an example, if uh, Kwin crashes for any reason, all of the windows will be thrown in the same activity. You will lose all of the you know, stuff that you had set up. So it, it is, I, I understand that, but uh, there's, a uh, step back that we have to do in yeah. regarding, let's make sure that we understand at least what activities are even supposed to to be. Yeah, yeah I, I focused uh, a lot on activities because it's a feature that I really love and used on KD for a while, uh, back when I still had a day job and a YouTube channel. Uh, I, I had an activity for the day job and an activity for the channel, and it was great because I could just switch from one to the other, have all my windows laid out as I, as I wanted them. Uh, I could have all my widgets on the desktop exactly how I wanted them. And I could just switch back and forth. My computer has 32 gigs of RAM, so I never closed anything. And I left all the apps open all the time. And so uh, the next day when I had to go back to the day job, I just pressed the key combination. All my stuff was there. It was already laid out perfectly. It's, it's in my opinion, one of the best features. So I can absolutely mm -hmm. understand the fact that it's not clearly laid out how you want to move them forward or if you want to move them forward. And maybe they are not stable enough uh, to, to, to be promoted. I personally didn't experience any crashes or anything, but that doesn't mean that no one else has. So, so that's why I focused on it, because I think it's a great value added to the KDE desktop. I would be very sad if they were removed in, in Plasma 6, honestly, because, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great, great feature. And honestly, just writing and recording this video made me want to re-switch to KDE on my, on my desktop. It's, it, those kind of things and this kind of power is just something that, I, that I've been missing without knowing it. How did you discover about activities? Uh, I think it was completely on accident. Uh, uh, I was messing around in the settings, trying to see what else I could change, because that's one of the pleasures of KDE. <laughs> You're like, eh, I, I like my setup, but I would like to find other tweaks to find. I don't know why, but I want to find them. And so I looked yeah. at activities and I was like, what exactly is this? I had heard about it uh, back when KDE Plasma 4, I think, was released. Uh, I think it was introduced in, in Plasma 4. And I never really used it. I found the, the settings panel. I was like, I think I can find a use for this. And once I realized I could have a work and a personal workspace, I just started using it all the time. So there is some thought actually in making sure that the user uh, notices about the features, even though we don't like push them uh, in the front of their face. Uh, to make a specific example, uh, if you currently right-click into the desktop of KD Plasma, you will have a bunch of options. And between them, there is Show Activity Switcher. And since we suppose that people do right-click in the desktop, that is one way to making sure that the user at least knows that, that there is this option, even if they skim through uh, searching for something else. And this, at the same time, has its issues. As an example, 
Uh, one time we wanted to clean up that menu a bit. People rightfully say it's too crowded. And one of the option, one of the proposals was to remove the activity switch uh, option if you're not using activities. Yeah. That is, if you're only using one. And that idea was shut down because uh, that would make activities even less discoverable. So there is this uh, balance that we yeah. try to keep. And there are two things uh, about these features, I think. And I'm just talking about like f from my point of view, because I work for, for 11, 12 years uh, in product management and, and UX and trying to help users understand stuff and building new features onto websites and apps. So I have a, a, a bit of personal knowledge on that thing. And and to me, there are two, two ways uh, to approach features. First, you need to make sure that users know that they exist, but you also have to make sure that users understand what they do. And so having that option in the context menu is great because, well, people are like, what are activities? And they're going to click on it and they're going to see a switcher, but then they don't know what it does. They don't really understand how they could apply it to their own workflow or setup. And the same goes for the settings panel. When you arrive, you see a list. There's only one activity. You can create one, but you don't know what they do exactly. So you're probably not going to interact a lot with a setting you don't know or understand because you might be afraid that you're going to break something. Uh, you might be afraid that you're going to mess up your setup if you do something wrong. And if you don't know what the feature does, you, you're not really uh, enticed to, to try and interact with it. So if a person goes to the queuing mailing, mailing list, uh, there was a proposal by me uh, a bit of time ago that I sent there with mockups and everything, actually with the idea of making a new widget that would be by default on the Kitty Plasma panel that would have that would show you what is the current activity and give you the option to create new ones with um, a button to actually explain to you what activities are and a button to say I'm not interested and to remove that uh, entirely so that was a bit my idea and uh, I think this like this idea tackles uh, what you're yeah, saying absolutely so, yeah, it makes the feature discoverable and it explains what it does. And users, if they don't like it, can just remove the widget or say, I don't want that, and, and they're done. And of course, I understand. That there were also people commenting on the video saying, I don't want my desktop to tell me, hey, this is this and this is that and there's this new thing. And they, they don't want to be bombarded with notifications and optional stuff that they have to remove at each, each install. And and I understand it. It's, it's absolutely normal. And there's got to be a middle ground between like onboarding new users and explaining everything and returning users who don't want to like press next 20 times to, to, to say, I know all of this. So I, I don't know how this can be handled uh, apart from at install saying I'm a new user or I'm a returning user and adapting the layout or adapting the information level. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's also an issue when you start adding plasma panels or widgets or notifications everywhere because people who know Plasma are going to be like, I don't want that. You're making me lose 30 minutes every time I reinstall Plasma to remove my stuff. Yeah, that is something we should be careful. I'm also a bit worried about, uh, in this in this context, like looking like Windows. Windows does yeah. a lot of self-advertisement inside of uh, Windows, and uh, it's usually like uh, not very well received yeah. <laughs> when they add pop-ups to their own browser inside yeah, of you, you don't want to look like you're advertising. You don't want to look like you're, you're putting ads for other KDE apps or services in the middle of things because people don't like that. And generally, people who use Linux left Windows because of that kind of stuff. So yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. One thing you mentioned in the video that uh, I thought was funny, you mentioned the fact that you can change your right click on the desktop to an application launcher, which is a nice feature. And I think it is one of the most dangerous features we have actually, yeah. because I've seen a lot of users do that and then realize they cannot change the settings of the background anymore because you do that with right click. It, and there's a way to undo that, but yeah. uh, it's not easy to discover it. Yeah, you'd have to edit a panel and go into the settings uh, that are appearing on the little bar up top, I think. Yep, that's correct. And uh, I think that's not very discoverable, no. especially if you maybe don't have panels. In that case, I think you have to press and hold the background image. 
that should also do this. <laughs> yeah, maybe in the application launcher on the right click menu, adding a configure desktop <laughs> option would, wouldn't be terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that has happened to me. So I totally understand that. And um, there's another thing I wanted to highlight regarding KRunner. You talk about the fact that we don't highlight Runner match, it's just hidden in a shortcut. And I actually fully agree. Uh, it actually took me a bit of time after starting using Candy Plasma to discover about Runner. Uh, my, uh, However, it's probably the only um, place where I would say it's not too much of an issue because all the features that Runner has, the um, launcher, the application yeah. launcher yeah, also has. Menu, it's yeah. the same exact search and it's much more discoverable. Obviously, you just open the application launcher. So I would say there's not that much of a reason to highlight Runner when you have the same features on the application launcher. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually a, a comment on the video pointed that out. I said, why would I want to press two keys to do the same thing that I can do when just pressing one key? And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to answer to that. <laughs> You're right. Well, there is one feature of Kerana which I think uh, is very nice, which is say that Plasma shell crashes because you are a developer and you're messing with it. Kerunner is still alive, so you can restart Plasma Shell using it, but it's not the kind of features that uh, you want to use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, regarding the solutions that you proposed, one that I kind of expected to be there, but wasn't, maybe it wasn't directly in the topic of the video, was uh, improving the system settings. Not, not like adding more to it, but even just improving the layout and how options are, um, you know, designed there like uh, and uh, organized yeah yeah i i floated an idea a while ago uh, on, on another video i think which was basically splitting the settings into two modes that would be a, a normal user mode with the very basic setting pages that you might need to just interact with your desktop and an advanced user mode which lists all the additional things that you could do like for example kwin scripts and uh, and activities and stuff like that but i think the issue with that would be that a lot of users that don't feel super comfortable yet would never enter advanced user mode because they would be scared that it means they would break something or, or, or disable stuff that they would need in the future. And I think the layout for KDE settings is actually not bad right now. Like with the new updates to, uh, to KDE frameworks, uh, you have those new labels uh, that are displayed in bold and, and that serves as a group for other settings. I think it's way more legible than it used to be. So of course, there, there are still tons of Plasma panels and settings and you have sub menus and, and, and a very complex hierarchy, but I don't think they're illegible right now. Uh, they, they can be like, uh, what's the word? Uh, they can be not terrifying, but a bit uh, a bit scary because there's a lot, but I don't think they're, they're hard to navigate or understand right now. They're, they're well grouped. That's that's a good uh, good news to us for sure, <laughs> and uh, actually organizing system, system settings is something that we have worked on a lot, obviously because it's a bit of the the heart of KDE Plasma, I think. And um, there's still work uh, going on. There is a task on the GitLab that talks about how we could improve, and there's a pretty long discussion with various proposals, and. Um, there are a lot of issues like regarding system settings that hopefully should be fixed by like Plasma 6. As an example right now, system settings mixes together some sections made in QML and some sections made in QD widget, um, widgets, which is something very technical. Uh, the users should not know, should not notice about that. But of course, from a techno the techno technological point of view, that's a bit of a challenge to address. But with uh, more and more sections switching to QML, it should be easy to reorganize them. And uh, there is a task to do that. So it is something that we're yeah. still working on and um, that will hopefully improve with uh, KDE Plasma 6. And um, regarding basic and advanced mode, uh, there is actually a page on the KDE Wiki, which is called Lessons Learned. Uh, which talks about all the recurring discussions that we have in KD Plasma, just to make sure that we, we kind of stop having them at a certain point, because there is, uh, there is some risk of repeating ourselves too much. And the first element is actually uh, about basic and advanced modes. And what it says, the first lines are like, 
the design pattern is not always wrong, but it must be, must be used sparingly. And he talks about all the issues that could arise from using this. So it is something that uh, we don't like too much. It's not something we are aiming for uh, as a general thing. And it's explained nicely in that page. Yeah, and I understand completely. It's a, I think it would be a, let's say, a stopgap solution. It would be like, we're not going to work on this thing anymore. We're just going to lump everything in advance. And that's going to give us license to say, if you don't understand the settings, just go into user mode. And I think it, it, it would be a cop-out, basically. You would say, you know what? Yes, there are tons of settings, but they're hidden now, so there's no problem. But that, that doesn't fix the problem, really just moves it or hides it. Yeah, the, that's a risk. Then, uh, as a proposed solution, you also took about the welcome app that Kitty yeah. Plasma is introducing these days. You're very up-to-date. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, Actually, when you mentioned it, I was like, uh, after watching the previous part of the video, I was like, but it's not going to solve the issue, which is, which is also something that you also say. Now, we are introducing, I use we, but it's I have nothing to do with that. Some kitty developers more skilled than me are introducing a page regarding Plasma itself that talks about widgets and how you can um, customize widgets, move them around. We are currently stuck on the fact that we don't have some artwork to show yeah. uh, for that. So there is work going on in that direction, but that's kind of it. Like um, another thing that I think is still is in the lessons learned page is uh, when you, the user has the um, uses the first install wizard, they don't know about Kitty Plasma yet. They don't know probably what they want. So asking for layout as an example is probably way too soon for our, a user that is starting to use Kitty Plasma right now. They might just not know the answer yet. And same goes for maybe just light dark mode can still work, but anything more advanced, we, we'd really like not to ask that users yet. Yeah, because that, that, that's what I said in the video, like you're going to have a welcome app, but the, the things that are pointed in the welcome app are are general things that you could do on basically every desktop. It's like, here's Discover, that's where you install your apps. Uh, here's how you can contribute or donate to the project. Uh, here is your dark or light mode, stuff like that. But but it's not meant to point out specific features uh, like, hey, you never use KDE Plasma. Do you want to use, uh, I don't know, activities? You don't even know what a virtual desktop is yet. That It might be too soon, yeah, for this kind of stuff. It might be too soon. Uh, just one thing about the layout chooser, though, uh, I do want to point out that there was work going on by a developer to implement a system settings section for the layout. Personally, it's a feature that I've always like asked for, which I think would be really nice. But in KD Plasma, the question is not, do we want this? But rather, is there somebody with the skills yeah. that has also time to implement this? And the patch kind of went stale, I guess, because the original um, proposer didn't have enough time to actually work on it so there is that limitation but yeah. it and is something it, that it's, we it's would always want. been a, a thing that i wanted as well because there are a lot of gnome distributions that do this and and gnome is not meant to do this like it, it's done through extensions it's not done through the, the native capabilities of the desktop and people love that uh, on these distributions like the the, the layout switcher in zorin os for example is one of the features that everybody raves about when they talk about zorin os it's like in one click, you can have a system that is a an approximation of what you already know and use, or you can have something that is completely different if you want to have fun. And, and the fact that Plasma can do that natively and probably with more stability than, than GNOME uh, can, can do it is, I think, a very good argument to, to, to push that. And as I said in the video, it also showcases that you can do this kind of stuff in a in a, a specific way, it's not like, hey, if you right click here and if you move your panel here, you could have a top bar. And if you add the global menu applet, you can have a top bar like macOS. Instead of explaining all the steps, you show people that in one click, you can have a macOS layout. And then they're like, okay, so I can do this myself. Uh, and they can start running around with it and playing around with it. We do have uh, global themes. Uh, yep. They're not just about the layout, of course, but also about the look. But they do include layout. Yep. You can have a specific layout in a global theme. So if you do want a certain look, 
uh, you can just apply it, select layout as well, and you will have that. So in some sort, we do have that feature. You, we, we don't have the layout specifically unless you only select layout when switching the global theme. Yeah, that's and, and the, the issue, issue with that is that you have to know about global themes, but that, that's quite easy, I think, to discover because we, you're already getting offered like the, the twilight look, the dark look, uh, the, the, the light uh, theme. So you, you know where this is and you can notice that get more stuff button, so it, it, it works. Uh, but the issue is that those global themes uh, are generally not complete. Uh, for example, if you want to apply a Mac OS theme, there's one, I think, uh, I don't remember the name, but I showed it in the video. But if you apply it, you do get the top panel with a global menu, but you don't get additional applets. Uh, you don't get, for example, the name of the application in the top bar. You don't get a dock at all. So if you apply the theme, you basically lose uh, access to certain features. You don't have a task switcher, for example, or, or launcher. And that's a bit limiting. And I think having official KDE layouts, uh, official Plasma layouts might be a better way to introduce that instead of letting people use layouts made by users that can be a bit broken or a bit or associated with a theme that might not look right on certain applications. We, we uh, did have a proposal, I think from Nate, Graham, to um, add some uh, default layouts that record other um, desktops and operating systems like Windows, Macintosh, and such with names that were obviously not those of the operating system. You're going to call that similar. Cupertino and Redmond. And <laughs> yeah, it, it is a merge request that um, went, was not accepted well, unluckily, mostly because uh, I think that yeah, was we want to have something that works for us and we yeah. don't want to be seen as copying uh, other people. We are particularly afraid of this kind of stuff because we are always told like KD Plasma is copying Windows 11, even though it's not true at all. Yeah, no. so. the, the layout is not even the same. The, it, it doesn't yeah. look like it. And, and KD has looked like that since before Windows 11 even existed. So I don't know where that is coming from. That's really yeah. yeah. And luckily people will see a traditional desktop <laughs> and say, yeah, yeah, Windows. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's basically it. And I can yes. understand that. I mean, you, you want to offer your own experience and you don't want to have like callbacks to other things. Uh, but I think it would be nice to find a way. Maybe it's not predefined layouts, but it would be nice to find a way to, to show users that they can easily replicate stuff that they know or create some new things. Uh, but maybe that doesn't go through uh, predefined layouts. Yeah. So I, I think uh, like uh, the main proposal of the video is like a new thing that works a bit like a game tutorial and shows you the stuff around with like skip buttons and such. And uh, that that would be an, like a, a new application, let's say, that would work as an overlay to other. And I, I'm not against the idea at all, obviously. I, I think it's a nice idea. I, I am worried about the amount of work that it would uh, it yeah. would require. Uh, we're kind of busy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's always the problem with that thing. Uh, that's something I always pushed uh, in my various day jobs uh, to have on our applications or websites because I worked on some stuff that was really dense. There were a lot of things, uh, and no one was ever against it but also it was never prioritized uh, even even i as the product owner never managed to get that prioritized because my boss would always say ah, we were going to do this thing first uh, and the tutorials later everything was ready but no one ever works on it because it's very time consuming it can be very hard to adapt to the different screen sizes and layouts when you have floating things pointing at things it's not going to be able to adapt to various distros, which might have changed the layout as well. Uh, so you would have to wait for specific distributions to make their own implementation of it, which means that you might have to develop something that is modular, which is even more complicated. So it's always a very, very tricky thing. And, and I guess no one really wants to work on that instead of working on a new cool feature. That's, that's totally understandable. I do want to defend uh, developers slightly about this. Uh... Because even though, yeah, it's true that working on a new feature is cool and uh, such, almost like the majority of KD developers, especially KD core developers, are not adding new features uh, a lot. And 
I understand that from the outside, it seems like Kitty Plasma is the desktop of the features and there's always new features coming up, but most of the focus is regarding bug fixing, obviously. And a lot of times uh, there are nice features that are added by people that are very new to Kitty Plasma and that don't have yet the skills to do like significant maintaining work. So it still makes sense. It's not like Kitty developers are only focusing no, on features. Uh, of and course, that, that's not at all what I wanted to imply. And uh, it's just that in general, finding someone who has the time to build a fully modular tutorial system with pointers and the ability for distros to adapt to it, it's, it's going to be a huge amount of work. And unless you're really certain that this is a fantastic feature for users. Okay, so I was talking um, about one thing we could do to improve system settings. I think that maybe uh, wouldn't require too much resources, even from developers. And that is adding some explanation about the features in system settings yeah. themselves. Some pages, like you open the page for activities and you do get a text on the top that talks about what activities are and how to use them. Is with that out? I think, yes, I think so. Because the, the main issue is is not discoverability because, well, you have that link in the, in the main right-click menu and people who start browsing the settings can find activities. Uh, but the issue would be you arrive on that settings page and you don't know what it does. And so having just a little bit of text or, or a link to a video explaining the features or an embed of the video would probably help a lot because it, it gives users a use case. You're saying, okay, this is activities. This is a suggestion of what you could use it for. And then you let the user figure out if that's something they want, if they can use that use case specifically, or if, if they have their own use case uh, for, for the feature. But I think that would be yeah. great, yeah. It's something that could be uh, that uh, could be like uh, improved upon. Also, when you talked about in the video about like ev every feature that you add should have like a plan to how the user learns about them. Uh, I had that reaction of like uh, yes, like in theory this is totally a great idea, uh, but when you actually do the stuff in practice. <laughs> Uh, you know, we have to meet reality and we usually don't have a lot of time to do like uh, plans and stuff for the features. We just try our best and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Even when I talk about testing stuff, uh, a, lot, a lot of people just assume that we do a lot of testing and like uh, automated testing and such. And um, okay, yes, we can do that for stuff like uh, the frameworks, but when it's UI, testing the UI, you need to, um, need to have some screenshot mechanism. Yeah. That's kind of very tough actually to implement. It's so, really hard, uh, yeah. yeah e we, even we when I worked on, on websites and web applications, even that was extremely annoying because you have stuff like, uh, like it's, I think it's headless Chrome, uh, which lets you render a web page but never displayed anywhere. And then you have to implement timers and coordinates, like you have to click on a specific CSS class and wait X seconds for in case the connection is long or not. And so your tests are extremely long. If there's a little problem in the timer, everything fails and you have to restart it again. And that's for web. Uh, I think for a full-on compiled desktop binary app. I don't even know how you would make that work, honestly. Yeah, there is some effort in that sense with OpenQA by OpenSUSE, I think. And uh, they do a little bit of texting of like the basic KD Plasma features, opening a uh, dolphin, create a new folder, these kind of things. But uh, doing that extensively for all applications, testing the UI, it's something that, I mean, Ideally, yes, you, yeah, you would like that, course. obviously. <laughs> but, but do you have practice. time to actually implement that? That's that's the the problem. Because if you I if you start doing yes. that, you're gonna spend like a year implementing something like that, and then people are gonna be like, "Oh, there's nothing new. Uh, KDE is dying." <laughs> yeah, it's, that, uh, yeah, that's it's also hard. a very important point. Like some people, some people just say, you know, KDE should stop adding new features and just focus on bug fixing. Totally understand that. It's completely impossible to do. I have talked about this yeah. a lot. Like you can't do that. And uh, one of the reasons that you would get people saying, oh, KD is dying. There's nothing new. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I don't think that people who want to work on new features would immediately be converted into bug fixing developers. It's, it's not the same work. It's not the same interests. It's not like it's a company paying thousands of developers and forcing them to do what they want. It's, it's volunteer work. You can't 
tell a volunteer, hey, you are going to work on bug fixing and you're going to forget about the features. The guy is going to be like, well, I'm going to work on something else then. Yeah, no, they're still going to implement new features. We just wouldn't land them. That yeah. would be oh, even yeah. worse. Okay. <laughs> and that would be wasted work. Yeah, and, and, that, and, that, yeah, and that's even worse because by the time you want to actually merge <laughs> these new features, that they're completely out of date with everything else and you have to yes. rework them entirely. It doesn't work. Yes, exactly. So it's not something that we can actually... So there's always this uh, sad uh, thing of reality is out. Yeah. So... And so <laughs> when I was talking about that, having a having a plan for each feature, it's not, it's not each feature, it's each major feature. Like for example, floating panels would have been nice to have a little help or indication of something instead of having to right click on the panel to discover that you could do that. Of course, if you follow the new developments of KDE, and I'm talking about floating panels because I know you've worked on it, but uh, if you don't follow the regular KDE channels or media, or if you don't watch the release videos or the videos that people like me make, you don't know that this happened. You don't know that this exists. But for, for some other features, like we reorganize the system settings, you, you don't have to communicate about that. Uh, or if it's, I don't know, a, a smaller option, like uh, you, you can now toggle the tablet mode uh, automatically or choose when you want to toggle it. I don't think you have to have a complete plan to talk about that. But for major stuff, I think it's interesting to to have that in mind. Maybe maybe you don't have the time. That's absolutely okay. and You can't do everything. But maybe have that somewhere. So when someone has the time or someone wants to work on it, they could have that idea that has been globally accepted when talking about the feature, that this is how we would like to communicate about it. Uh, it's hard, I know. It's a, it's it's extra work, yeah. and and I, I'm not saying it should be done by every one and for every feature. But I think it would be nice to have for the big features at least a, some kind of even just two words in a wiki that someone could refer to if they actually want to work on that at some point or if they have time to work on that. It would be cool. Yeah, in general, even for like smaller features, we always have this idea of trying not to add small off by default, non-discoverable yeah. options. We are tempted to do that sometimes because maybe you do want options, but if it's off by default and it's not discoverable, then not many people will use it and will it will end up being maintenance burden. And um, uh, the last thing that I actually picked from the comments, uh, those were very interesting as well, I gotta say. Uh, it talked about video tutorial tutorials. Yeah. Like somebody proposed having video tutorials about KD Plasma, and that is something that sparked my interest particularly, especially because you know I do videos for KD Plasma. Some of those videos are kind of tutorial, but I don't do a lot of tutorials. Uh, that is a lot of work, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what I would like to see ideally is. KD paying somebody to do that kind of work, even if it's just making videos, improving um, the documentation, tutorials, that kind of stuff. That is something that uh, that I would like to see. But of course, uh, KD is mostly getting started on hiring people to do this kind of work. We do have a developer position. We do have a um, doc, um, uh, a person that will work on, on documentation. The documentation. Sorry. Yeah, and um, these kind of things. So, so that, in theory, should improve. But doing video tutorials is a lot of work. And yeah. I think... And, and you have to redo them all the time because every time yeah. there's a certain change in what you're showing, even if it's not... Even if it doesn't concern directly what you're talking about, you have to redo the tutorial or at least modify it to implement the new thing. And so it's ongoing work. And the more tutorials you have, the more work you have to make. So when I read yeah. this comment, it, it, I immediately added to my video ideas list, something that I'll probably work in January. It's a master KDE series. Uh, basically something that either in one video or in a series of video, so something that just explains basically everything about the desktop, like how, how you handle panels, how you can switch widgets, how you use widgets, how you use activities, how you can configure your window manager, ev everything. Every basically every panel, every settings panel would have a, a part in one or more videos uh, to to try and, and and group that because I think it's something that could interest people and I think it's a good reference. Uh, it's not just hey, I made a video saying Katie should do this and, and then <laughs> then oh, my work is done here. It's like putting money where my mouth is or 
yes, that's the expression, and, and, and saying, okay, well, I talked about this and I have the capability to do it, so why not do it? It, it would be not an official KDE tutorial. It would probably focus on stuff that I find interesting, but I think it would still be interesting to have. I would suggest waiting for KDE Plasma 6. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Things might change, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I, I was wondering, do you use like KD Plasma in your daily machines now, nowadays? I always have a laptop that runs KD Plasma, yes. I, uh, my main desktop still runs, runs GNOME, uh, but I'm slowly realizing that on laptops, I prefer GNOME for the gestures, and on desktops, I prefer KDE because KDE does now have gestures on Wayland, but I don't find them as smooth and, and as easy to use as the ones on GNOME. But on a desktop where I don't have a touchpad, I don't care about gestures. I care about efficiency. And I think KDE is more efficient for me on a desktop. So uh, my yeah. desktop is going to move to KDE, is going to move back to KDE at some point uh, in, in the close future. But I do always have a laptop with KDE Neon uh, because I always want to try new stuff and see how KDE handles things to have comparisons to other desktops. So I always have a machine running KDE. That makes sense. And gestures in GNOME are really good. And uh, I did try them for a while. And uh, I actually did not switch back to KD Plasma until KD Plasma implemented mm. gestures as well, because that was that became a deal breaker after using GNOME gestures. Even though, yes, I agree, they're not as good. Do you have any, I, I'm just curious at this point, any other feedback about KD Plasma as a whole, opinions that you currently have? Honestly, I think I covered it with uh, with the video and, and with our talk. Uh, it's a desktop I absolutely love. I've, I, I've used it uh, ever since KDE 3.5 uh, back in the days. Uh, at the time, I, was, I started with Ubuntu, but I quickly just used KDE all the time. When KDE Plasma 4 released, I started compiling it every day. Uh, <laughs> I compiled the dailies on my one core Pentium something. It was absolutely atrocious. And, and, and I used it for a long, long time. And uh, only recently have I moved back to it. And I'm and now I'm switching back and forth between GNOME and KDE because sometimes I want to use one, sometimes I want to use the other. And, and I need to be able to use all of them to be as objective as can be about these desktops when I talk about them in my videos. But uh, I think KDE Plasma is in a fantastic place right now. Uh, all the work that has been done for the past, I think, two years on, on st stability, on bug fixing, on improving stuff that wasn't very legible. Uh, Discover has really matured and become really something great. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what I would change or what I would specifically focus on. Uh, even that, that uh, discoverability of features, for me, it's not interesting to me personally, because I know the features and I know where to find them and I know I can look online for them. So even that wouldn't be a priority if it, if I'm just talking for, for myself personally. I don't really know what I would change, honestly, on KDE right now. It, it feels feature complete. It feels stable. It feels great to use. And yeah, it, I just really enjoy it. I'm so happy to hear somebody say, uh, it feels stable about KD yeah. Plasma. That doesn't happen very often to me. <laughs> hey, it, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it has its issues in back in the day, but I think a lot of people are, are stuck in an image they have like three or four years ago uh, from the transition to KD Plasma 4 or from 4 to 5, uh, which, yes, there were problems. But nowadays, I, I mean, I don't have a very complicated setup. I, I don't have a hybrid graphics laptop plugged into two external monitors with some weird peripherals. I have a big ultra wide and a desktop. So it's basically the easiest uh, use case, maybe. I don't use fractional scaling. I don't need it on that on that panel. So yeah, I'm I'm also a very low bar to please. But <laughs> but but my experience with KDE has been great on my on my laptop as well. It, it, Is it Wayland? Uh on the laptop it's Wayland, yeah. I use Wayland yeah. because I want those gestures. Yeah, I, I, I do agree that there's a lot of people that are uh, have like an old opinion about KD Plasma, or rather about an old KD Plasma. And that is, I think, why KD Plasma 6 is so important to get tried. I think a lot of people will try KD Plasma 6 after not having used it for a while to see how it changed, and we have to get it right, I think. And um, as much as I'm having a lot of fun, that is like everything, all the topics that I want to bring up, if you have anything to say... <laughs> uh, I don't think I can add anything else. Yeah, I think we, we've uh, we've discussed everything. 
that was super fun to uh, yeah super fun discussion. i hope that we'll be able to do this uh in the future again and i hope that we'll meet at academy next academy you'll yeah. be there right <laughs> i would love to yes absolutely i hope so nice so thanks for being here and thanks for um, having me go check out <laughs> his channel <laughs> <laughs> you totally need that for me right <laughs> yeah, go, go look at my crap <laughs> it's somewhere on youtube <laughs> and on peertube and on odyssey as well and <laughs> Yeah. So thanks everybody for following. <laughs>